2024 has brought a bunch of new tech and updates and in today's video we'll be covering everything that there is to know about the Insta360 desktop app version 5.0.0 using footage taken with the Insta360 X3 and the Insta360 Ace Pro. Don't forget that you can order your Insta360s from 180x2.co.za and without wasting any time let's get right into it. When you open up the app on your desktop or laptop, you'll find the basic layout that we're all used to, which is now part of this media tab at the top. If this is new to you, let's start from the top left where we've got tabs for local files, camera files, which are files from an external storage like a memory card, favorites for shortlisting and exports. To import your files, you can drag them, drop them in here or click open files, find them. I'm looking for this LRV file that ends in 009. Select and the file opens up. Now, if you wanna back up your files to an external storage or online storage, this next part is very important. If I search for 009 from the Explorer, I won't only get the LRV file, but I'll also see two video files. These represent the footage being captured from the two lenses on the X3. The LRV file is like the stitching file. It is very important that you copy all of these into the same folder when backing up. If not, you'll get an error message when you try to open up your 360 content. Now, as you can see, this content shows up in the camera files tab because I opened it directly from the memory card. If I clear this and then drag in the one that I've backed up, it will be in the local files tab. I'm also gonna bring in some Ace Pro footage that I'll be using later for an example. Now that we've imported footage, we can play, pause, jump to the beginning and to the end. These buttons let me trim the start and end of the video. So if I only wanna start the video somewhere here, I can click there, then hit mark as trim start or control left square bracket. And we'll see the changes even being applied on the clock here. The same can also be done for wherever you want the video to end by hitting control and right square bracket. Since this was shot in 360 with the X3, I can click and drag on the video to change my viewpoint to any direction. Now, make sure that you're on the reframe option up here and not in 360 view, which we'll skip in this tutorial because it's just not really for anything other than viewing and not necessary for video editing. On the lower right side of the video, you'll see this button that lets you change the aspect ratio. As long as you're doing this on 360 content or free frame videos, it'll be there. Then this button lets you save a snapshot of your frame. And the last one is a full screen button. Now with my time sitting at the beginning of the trimmed clip, if I click this add keyframe button or hit control K, I'll get this pop-up that shows me all of my keyframe options. Keyframes allow you to add camera movements. So if I play the video and then add another video at about two seconds, then drag my view the program will gradually change my view in the time that it takes to play from one keyframe to the next. I can change between the default view, which is fisheye, crystal ball, tiny planet, natural view, and so on. If I click and drag on the video, you'll see the pan and tilt settings change. If I hold control, then click and drag, the video will rotate. Rolling the mouse wheel will adjust my zoom, and this one here will adjust how much curvature I want in my video. To revert all those changes, click this circle icon. So sometimes your keyframes may be hard to select because they're very close to each other. So to get a bit of view, you can adjust this timeline zoom here or place your mouse on top of the timeline, hit control and then roll the mouse wheel. Let's click on our first keyframe and then hit spacebar and we can see the camera movement start to take effect. Let's add a third keyframe and then change that view to tiny planet then play again and there we go to delete the keyframe just click on it hit that x or press delete select the keyframe or just delete on your keyboard and that's how we use keyframes this next icon is called deep tracking and this allows you to track a moving object and keep it centered in your frame so i'm gonna bring in some other footage to show you as an example so here's sandile and i standing on opposite ends of the traffic circle and if I click on deep track, you'll see the tracking icon appear on me, which basically shows that the software already recognizes me as a potentially good subject to track. 
if the icon does not appear, you can click and drag over the subject as well. Just note that you'll have to drag starting from the upper left side of the subject because it only highlights going in that direction. Then hit start tracking and the app will do its tracking thing by just keeping him centered in the middle. Let's say we stop tracking from here. At this point, I can decide to maybe shorten how long the tracking takes effect. So if I play it from here, you'll see that we're tracking and then we're not. You can also click on this yellow tracking bar and adjust your zoom and curve settings, but you can't adjust these to change gradually over the time frame that you're tracking. Also, you can't add any keyframes onto deep tracking areas. I've seen this area pop up a million times, so please just save yourself. The next icon that we're gonna go through is time shift, which lets you slow down or speed up your footage. You've probably noticed some motion blur already that's been added. That can be toggled on and off by clicking the motion ND icon over there. And you can change some parameters of the motion blur by clicking this media processing tab on the right side of the screen. And you'll see options to help you tweak that to your taste and flavor. Now, this motion blur also applies to the camera movement, so turning left or right will make it happen as well. Apart from Motion in D, you've got other image processing options on the right, like Color Plus, which adds more depth to your colors, Clarity Plus, which can bring more detail out of your image, and then Aqua Vision, which is like a filter. Below that, we've got voice focus and noise reduction for your sound. I wouldn't say these really give you the best output, but they can work really well in terms of correction. Going up from that, at the top here, we've got stabilization type. So let's take this clip where the X3 was mounted on the helmet. Let's switch flow state stabilization off and play. If I switch flow state back on, the first thing that happens is that the horizon levels out. Then if I play again, now I've got smooth footage, but what if I still want to keep following the direction of the camera or the helmet as the guy turns his head? That's what direction lock does by still keeping your footage smooth and stable while you've got the direction lock happening. The next tab, you've got stitching settings. This is normally okay when you leave it on normal, but if you did use any of these accessories used here, you can use that option to adjust accordingly. Then you've got stitching optimization like dynamic stitching or optical flow, which are just two different methods of stitching your footage. And then chromatic color calibration helps to make sure that your colors fade over well on top of the stitch line. Then there's logo settings with some great preset logos that you can choose from, or you can import a logo of your choice. And then there are some parameters you can tweak down here like the size, position, and rotation. Then there's clip management. Now, say for instance, I had trimmed and edited this clip and added a couple of keyframes. Now I'd like to add different keyframes over the same clip without losing the progress that I've done on this edit. Simply click on create new clip and you'll get a duplicate here that you can add new changes and keyframes to. To go back to the original edit, just click it up here and it's back. Then finally, we've got this information tab which shows us all the details of the video. Once you're done reframing this media, you can then export it out by clicking this button and this will open up a box with options like your video's name, where to save it, the bitrate, and the resolution and format. Normally, I would export all of these clips separately, then use Premiere Pro to merge them all into one video with transitions and music. But now, Insta360 has added this project tab up here where I can do all of that. At this point, all of my media is brought into my project side with all the adjustments that I've made. Here at the top left, you've got tabs for media, music, which is provided by Insta360, text, and transitions. Let's start off by going back to media, temporary media, and then let's drag one of these clips onto our timeline. All my keyframes and trimming is still there, and the right side of the screen now holds all the parameters that I may want to change in video, image, or audio. Just above the timeline on the left is where you'll find all the video controls. In the middle, you'll see some project controls, and these on the right are for the timeline. This first one is like a magnet that snaps all your clips together, so if I put another clip next to that and turn that off, I can move that clip to the side and have that space, but once I switch it back on, they'll be forced to be next to each other. Then we've got a general snap button, and then we've got preview access. 
Now, if I switch this off, you'll notice that the line that follows the mouse on the timeline is gone. Once I turn it on, the line is back, and as I move over the video, I get a preview of all the frames. I like to edit my videos according to the music, and I'll be using my own music because I don't want to chance any copyright issues on YouTube. We can't import from the music tab, so we're going to go to Project Media under the Media tab and Import. Then I'm going to select this audio, drag that onto my timeline, click play, and we've officially started editing. Now these keyframes aren't synced to the music, so I can move them to the right or left position by matching them properly to the waves of the song down here. Obviously, if you understand this layout down here, then you can just import your footage and then come over to the project tab so you can reframe everything with the music from the jump because it all pretty much works the same, except since we've got clips here, we can now press the split button over here or control B as a shortcut to separate these clips. Also, speed is now applied to clips and not sections. So to change the speed, just split the beginning and the end of the clip press the lightning button or control R. Let's say you want to make it four times faster. And there it is. Now, make sure that you do your reframing before you split your clips. Otherwise, it just doesn't keep your reframing consistent. Now, let's go to the text tab. Here, you can add the basic default text with its settings, but you can't change the font, unfortunately. Or at the text library, you can get all of these text animations that you can use that are more eye-catching. The software will need you to download the animation the first time. And let's say we choose this one. Now, I see the block, but no text. That's because the animation gets placed to start from where my play needle is. So just place the block wherever you want it on your timeline. Position it, change the text, press play, and that's it. The last thing to go through is transitions that you can put in between clips. Now, see all these options here with the globe on them? Those are 360 transitions. So we can't use those transitions with footage shot on the Ace Pro. Only 360 cameras like the X3 can use them. Anyway, you can drag and drop these onto your clips and the transitions will apply. Add a few more between them and the other clips in between your timeline. Put everything that we've gone through together and by the end, you'll end up with something like this. And that's it for this tutorial on how to use the Insta360 app version 5.0.0. If you're interested in getting your hands on any Insta360 cameras that you can use with the software, check out 180x2.co.za to place your orders. And until next time, keep it real.